Good evening. Welcome to California Today. I'm Liang Zhang. Here is a preview of some of today's stories. California's recent extreme weather has created many disasters and problems. Flooding, downed trees, and even stranded cows bring distress to its residents. President Biden announced a new gun control executive order, but critics say more laws won't solve crime and violence. A conservative activist visited UC Davis to talk about American values, but a mob of protesters tried to interrupt the event. Wind and rain has taken over California by a storm. Other than widespread flooding, harsh winds broke windows and heavy snow stranded cattle. Harsh winds on Tuesday left downed trees and debris flying everywhere. In San Francisco, the fire department caught on camera glass windows falling from a high-rise building. Two windows were damaged. One is completely broken and another is cracked. Authorities called for shelter-in-place and evacuation orders. We currently have members of the Department of Building Inspection and 555 California Building Engineers evaluating this incident. A window company has been called in by 55 California staff to mitigate and, if needed, replace the actual windows. There were no injuries reported. The streets were reopened that evening. And emergency crews scrambled to patch the Pajaro River's levee in Monterey County. Drone video showed construction vehicles dumping rocks along the levee to be picked up and dropped in the water to stem the flow from the Pajaro River. Officials said about 21,000 people in the flood zone remained under evacuation orders or warnings. Earlier this month in Humboldt County, officials worked together to feed cows that were stranded in thick snow. We've received multiple reports of cattle dying off because ranchers cannot get to their cows due to impassable roadways. These are private roadways. Um, that's through snow and down trees. And so they want to know what can be done. One of the ranchers that's been around for a while said that, you know, in the 80s, when the snow was so prevalent and they couldn't get to the ranches, they called upon Cal Fire and in the, in the Coast Guard to help deliver hay um, out in those communities. Putting into practice the same method used years ago, Cal Fire and the U.S. Coast Guard work together on what is known as Operation Hay Drop. They load hay into their helicopters and drop them into remote mountain fields for the hungry cattle. This is an atypical type of operation, but it shows the resilience and the effectiveness of cooperating with various agencies so that in total we can better serve the communities that are affected. About 30 ranchers reached out for help. They pay for the hay that goes out for delivery. Authorities remind people to stay indoors and only travel when necessary. Flood waters are receding following Tuesday's downpour, but portions of Southern California remain under evacuation orders after yet another winter storm hit California earlier this week. According to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, there was a high risk of excessive rainfall in Central and Southern California. Evacuation orders were issued to residents living on the Santa Barbara County coastline, but as of Tuesday evening, officials lifted an evacuation order for residents in Alisal, Cave and Thomas Fires area. A map posted by Santa Barbara County shows that several hundred to thousands of people are impacted. Outside of Southern California, a high-risk area covers the central part of the Sierra Nevada range spanning from Yosemite National Park to east of Fresno in California's Central Valley. On California's central coast, crews rushed to repair a levee break on a storm-swollen river after it failed over the past weekend. More than 8,500 people were forced to evacuate and about 50 people had to be rescued as the water rose. Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency on Sunday for six more counties, on top of the 34 counties already under emergency orders. People seeking help or have questions about storm emergencies can call 211 or 311. If you have a critical emergency, call 911. Or you can go to calalerts.org to sign up to receive emergency alerts from your county officials. President Biden visited Monterey Park to introduce an executive order regarding gun restrictions and to meet with the victims' families of the tragedy that occurred in January. 
NTD's Jackie Reels was on scene and also spoke with a gun expert on why the order may not be helpful. Just two months ago, a deadly shooting left nine injured and 11 people dead here in Monterey Park. President Joe Biden's Tuesday visit to the city seeks to increase awareness around gun control. He announced an executive order requiring background checks for all firearm purchases, but pro-gun advocates say more gun control laws are not the answer to reducing violence. Today, I'm announcing another executive order that will accelerate and intensify this work to save more lives more quickly. First, this executive order helps keep firearms out of dangerous hands. As I continue to call on Congress to require background checks for all firearm sales. But not everyone agrees with Biden's administration executive order. One such critic is John Lott, president of the Crime and Prevention Research Center. He said, I mean, the irony is he's traveling out to California, uh, where they've just had a spate of mass public shootings. Uh, California has uh, well above the national average in terms of mass public shootings. They already have an assault weapons ban, which he also called for. Uh, basically, everything he called for, uh, California already has, and yet they have this very high rate of mass public shootings there. Lodd said criminals don't follow gun restrictions and they take advantage of public spaces for shootings. 94% of the mass public shootings in the United States take place in areas where guns are banned. These killers may be crazy in some sense, but they're not stupid. They go to places where they know their victims aren't going to be able to go and defend themselves. But President Biden said his executive order is more than just banning guns. The executive order also expands public awareness campaigns about the red flag orders, laws. We need to provide more mental health support and grief for grief and trauma. Yet, Lodd said there's a better alternative to red flags and explain laws already in place, such as involuntary commitment laws. The devil's in the details there, because uh, that's already the law in all 50 states. Uh, they don't get at how the red flag laws change it from what are called involuntary commitment laws. And if you were going to go and ask people, well, does your opinion of this red flag laws change if you're told that there's no hearing prior to the gun being taken away uh, and that there are no mental health care experts involved in the process? According to the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, the Monterey Park suspect acquired his gun legally in 1999, but he was not registered in California. The Golden State ranks first for having the most strict gun laws in the country and is also among the list of states with the most shootings. According to the Gun Violence Archive, California recorded 12 mass shootings so far for 2023. Florida also recorded 12, and Texas tops the list at 13. Law noted law enforcement and laws can help stop crime if criminals know it is riskier to commit crimes due to a strong legal system. Jackie Rios, NTD News, Monterey Park, California. Conservative activist Charlie Kirk spoke about American values yesterday. The event took place at the University of California, Davis. However, a mob of protesters tried to stop people from attending the event. NTD's Daniel Monahan has more. Charlie Kirk is the co-founder of Turning Point USA. According to its website, it's a nonprofit organization whose mission is to identify, educate, train, and organize students to promote freedom. Kirk says that totalitarians and tyrants are the most bothered when they realize they can't break your will. He underlined the importance of showing up at conservative events, running for local office, pressuring school boards, and homeschooling children. He says conservatives have to justify their viewpoints at every single turn. You get tougher when you have to do that. You get tougher when you have to debate and you have to defend your positions. At every turn, the left is weak. They're weak and they are fragile. Weak, fragile people try to prevent other people from speaking. On The Family, Kirk called on young people to hold their parents in high regard. He says one of the reasons America is falling apart is because society is teaching children to no longer honor their parents. Do everything you possibly can to not allow divisive politics or different ideas to get in the way of your family relationships or your close relationships. 
On gender reassignment procedures for minors, Kirk pointed out that those suffering from gender dysphoria often also have other ailments, such as depression, schizophrenia, anxiety, and bipolar disorder. So again, wouldn't it be rational to do what is reversible, which is just cognitive behavioral therapy, not what is irreversible to a 12-year-old that might be going through a temporary puberty-driven crisis? Wouldn't that be a more loving, rational way of going about it? Kirk says teenagers make mistakes and go through identity crises and are susceptible to social contagions and peer pressure. Kirk also alluded to the vandalism that was committed to try to shut down the event. He says windows were broken, the building was spray painted, and people had stuff thrown at them. And the fact that this event is allowed to go on is a testament to the terrorists that we are not going to put up with force of trying to shut down people you don't like. Kirk says the successful holding of the event was a statement that, quote, speech wins in America. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. We're going to take a short break, but here's a look at what we got for you when we come back. Tech companies continue to announce more layoffs. Another 10,000 jobs have been slashed at Facebook's parent company, Meta. The famous bald eagle pair in Southern California recently had a surprising but an uninvited guest. A young eagle showed up in the area, but Jackie and Shadow made it clear that this was their territory. And San Jose's locals celebrated their community. A longtime resident received a Citizen of the Year award, and police took a moment to thank residents for their support and help. That and more on California Today. Facebook parent company Meta has announced that it will be slashing another 10,000 jobs. This will be the second round of job cuts since laying off 11,000 people last November. Facebook parent Meta announced that it would be cutting another 10,000 jobs and closing around 5,000 open positions. In a Tuesday press release, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg broke the bad news to staff while giving an update on the company's efforts to slash costs. He says, quote, as I've talked about efficiency this year, I've said that part of our work will involve removing jobs, and that will be in service of both building a leaner, more technical company. This will be tough, and there's no way around that. The widely anticipated job cuts are part of a broader restructuring plan. Meta said in February that its profits declined for a third consecutive quarter. The company blamed its aggressive hiring during the pandemic to keep up with user demands. But as lockdowns became a thing of the past and normal life resumed, the company's revenue growth began to fade. Zuckerberg says that this round of layoffs will be from the company's recruiting team and that team members will be notified on Wednesday. He also announced that U.S.-based tech workers will also be facing restructuring and layoffs in late April. And in late May, the company's business units are also expected to be let go. In a smaller number of cases, Zuckerberg says that it could take until the end of the year to complete the terminations, and that the job cut timelines for Meta's international staff members will differ. A major U.S. home building company has announced the plans to move its headquarters out of California. This comes as many firms have been leaving the Golden State to find better business environments. A major construction firm, Lancy Homes, announced on March 6 to move its corporate headquarters to Dallas, Texas. The firm develops homes and communities in Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Arizona, Florida, Texas, and its home state of California. John Ho, CEO of Lancy Homes, told the investors, quote, We are relocating our corporate headquarters to Dallas, Texas, from Southern California, a move that should provide cost savings over time. The home development company joins a list of firms that left California for a better business environment in Texas, including ExxonMobil, AT&T, Hewlett-Packard, and Tesla, among many others. Hundreds of thousands of middle-class Californians and companies said they were fed up with high taxes, pandemic mandates, rising crime, and crumbling infrastructure. Texas and Florida are the two states that gained the most from the outward surge of residents. The two states even gained additional congressional seats due to their increase in population. 
A young eagle was spotted in Jackie and Shadow's territory last week. The bald eagle pair was not pleased with the situation as they chortled at it and defended their territory. Let's take a look. For the past week, Jackie and Shadow have spent less time at their nest. The pair have been hanging out in the nest area, hunting and using their favorite perch trees. But live stream footage provided by friends of Big Bear Valley caught a new eagle in the area on March 9th. According to the organization, Jackie was hanging out on her favorite perch tree when a sub-adult landed on the same tree. Shadow then chased the intruder right past the nest. When the young eagle landed in a nearby tree, Shadow and Jackie continued to shout at it. The young eagle eventually left the area, but Shadow continued to guard the nest throughout the afternoon. Some people in the comments speculated that the sub-adult might have been Spirit, Jackie and Shadow's chick from last year. But Friends of Big Bear Valley says, quote, The markings on the visitor show it to be at least two and maybe three years old. So as much as we would all like it to be, it was definitely not Spirit. For now, Jackie and Shadow continue to spend time together in the nest area as they move on from the recent loss of their eggs. Sometimes small dogs believe they are really big dogs. Such was the case with this little pup in Southern California. That little white puffball is Tofu. Tofu was running loose in a parking lot Saturday at Junipero Beach when the dog ran into the waves. Long Beach lifeguards say Tofu swam about 150 yards offshore, prompting lifeguards to going for the rescue. Tofu was loaded up onto a paddleboard and brought to safety. While cold and shaken up after such a long swim, this little pup is doing just fine, as back with its owner. A longtime San Jose resident received this year's Citizen of the Year Award for volunteering and being a positive impact on the community. Local law enforcement also took a moment to thank locals for their help and support in recent cases. The City of San Jose held a ceremony to award this year's Citizen of the Year title to Sita Kern. It's an honor, truly, to be, uh, to live here in such a diverse community. Kern volunteers at many local events and organizations. She names the library and park cleanups as some of the activities she's involved in. And she has one wish for the community. My wish to the community would be to, um, to make it a little bit more safe. Um, uh, as as we all know, there uh, is a lot of crime in, in all the cities uh, in the United States. And our police department and sheriff's department and highway patrol is actually doing a great job of creep uh, keeping the crime down. And solving criminal cases sometimes requires support from the local community. One such case was the recent arrest of a man who was suspected and charged with bombing two PG&E transformers. That incident is a perfect example of community working with the police, giving us video footage, giving us pictures, cameras, and just tips that help us figure out big solutions to problems like that. With help from locals, police were able to identify the man and a resident that allegedly housed explosive materials. San Jose police took a moment to thank the residents for helping officers and hope to build stronger relationships with locals to create a safer community. And community was the focus of Monday evening's event. In addition, this evening we're also celebrating all of the contributions of our Chinese community. And every year we select a different ethnic group that we get to learn a little bit about the history and a little bit about uh, their contributions to our Barry Essex community. Kern and others encourage people to serve and be involved in their local communities. As she says, there are opportunities for everyone. Now let's check in with NTD's Tyler Castillo for today's Sports Roundup. Welcome everyone, I'm Tyler Castillo and I'm taking you through the California Today Sports Roundup. 
Anthony Davis scored 35 points with 17 rebounds against his former team and Malik Beasley added 24 points as visiting Los Angeles turned a 75 point first half into a victory over New Orleans. Brandon Ingram scored 22 points for the Pelicans against his former team. Davis and Ingram were key components in a trade between the teams before the 2020 season. Ingram returned after missing the past two games due to an ankle injury. The Lakers were up 75-40 at halftime following their highest scoring first half of the season. The Lakers made 15 of their 27 attempts from three-point range in the first two quarters. It was the most made three-pointers during a half in franchise history. New Orleans pulled within 107 to 94 with just over 5 minutes remaining in the 4th quarter before Los Angeles finished off with the victory. Lakers 123, Pelicans 108. Johnny Goudreau scored in overtime to cap a 5 point night and lead Columbus to a wild victory in San Jose. Goudreau and Patrick Laine had a 2 on 0 which resulted in Capo Kakinen making a highlight reel save. However, as Kakinen was down, Goudreau was able to spin around the net and shoot it in the top corner to win the game. Boone Jenner also scored twice and Ken Johnson and Liam Foudy also scored for Columbus. Daniel Tarasov made 27 saves and also had an assist. Logan Couture had a goal and two assists. Alexander Barabanov had a goal and an assist, and Kevin LeBanc also scored for San Jose. William Eklund also scored his first NHL goal of his career, and Nikolai Kunisov scored his first for the season after he missed the previous two seasons due to injury. This is the fourth straight loss for the San Jose Sharks, who is the first team in the NHL to be eliminated from any hope for a playoff contention. Goaltender Capo Kakinen finished the game with 42 saves. Blue Jackets 6, Sharks 5. Blake Lizett, Drew Doughty, and Alex Iafalo scored in a 5 minute span of the second period, and Los Angeles held on to beat visiting New York. Trevor Moore and Quinton Byfield also scored. Vladislav Gapikrov had two assists and Jonas Corposalo made 26 saves for the Kings, who are 6-0-1 in their past seven games. Pierre Engvall and Jean-Gabriel Pajot also scored. Jean-Gabriel Pajot had two assists and Ilya Soroka made 32 saves for the Islanders in the opener of a three-game California trip. Kings 5, Islanders 2. Thank you for tuning in for today's Sports Roundup. That's all we've got for you tonight. We would like you to join us again on California Today every weekday at 8.30 p.m. Make sure to check out our broadcasts on our California Today webpage. You can find it at ntd.com slash California dash today. You can also find all of our top latest clips there, ready to share with friends and family. Send us a message on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, or through our email, california.today at ntd.com. I'm Ling Zhang. Have a wonderful evening.